from Area 51 Raceway and greetings. Today we have the uh, NSR Mossler and uh, we're going to talk about some tuning stuff for uh, beginners. This is just beginner stuff like myself for my own track. Uh, every track is different. I don't care where you go. You have to tune the car for the track. They're not all the same. Uh, you always have to tweak here and there for somebody else's track whether it be wood, plastic or whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. But uh, NSR makes a real, well, this is a 2017 catalog. I don't know if they make catalogs. It may be all online now because nobody makes nice, pretty colored catalogs anymore. It's kind of a shame. This uh, <clears throat> has all the part numbers and uh, the colors and what they mean and configurations of chassis, especially for the Mossler because the Mossler that we're working on is the Evo 3 chassis. And the difference between the Evo 3 and the Evo 5 is that the 5 has adjustable front end or adjustable front axle, excuse me, you see it's got grub screws um, holes, so you could do that where the Evo 3 does not. It just has an axle, it just goes through it. And it does well if you don't have the Evo 5 chassis, but I prefer an adjustable axle. But I have what I have, and it's no big deal. And it tells you about the tires, the air gap system. Tools, really, really nice catalog, <clears throat> very nice put together. And what I have here also is a pendle slot, has a, a little link to easy easy guide for tuning the nsr cars and then what it does it goes into depth explaining what certain plastics or you know hard soft for what track condition you know the suspensions the motor pods uh, tires all kinds of stuff um the great the gears explains you know crown gear pinion gear wheels the air gap system really really great book there's it tells you the configuration uh, excuse me great little link to to this uh, to the NSR car and I will post the link right below this video as we're as I'm talking about it so anyways so we're gonna move on to what we're gonna do this NSR so uh, what we're gonna do this Mossler <clears throat> is this is a stock car let's see I took the body screws off take the body off and I took these tires off a long time ago to use it on something else this car is virtually new as you can see it still has the magnet and what we're going to do is we're going to chuck that out of the way. And then what we want to do with this is uh, change the guide to a uh, slot invasion deep deep guide for Carrera or wood track. And then we're going to change the brushes to the tin plated copper braid from Slot Car Corner. This is a slotted braid. And then we're going to put a soft suspension in the motor pod. And here's the suspension kit for this. Very, uh, very easy to put on. And of course we have our tires. And just for the heck of it, we'll change the lead wires just for, you know, shits and giggles. Uh, again, this is a beginner's thing. It's nothing uh, too involved. All I could tell you is that once you get everything in, is that you'll tune the car as you drive it around uh, by, you know, Putting the screws most of the way in and then twisting them out you know as you drive the car to see what works best uh, I did that with my Formula F1 car man that thing rips I got it down to you know I kept messing with it and messing with it and you have to play with these cars when you have it around your track and it, it handles really nice and same thing with even a Carrera car the last project I did with the Carrera uh, digital car you had to play with it <clears throat> and make it work now I don't have the NSR body screws that that I would usually use on these because they're a little bit different than the other cars like the Corvette C7 and the other ones that they made that uh, NSR makes. So we still can use the <clears throat> you can still use the original body screws and all you do is going to turn them out a little to give you a body float because body float is really important for the car. It allows the handling to be better as the body has movement. It allows the car to just handle a lot better because you have movement of the body. It's not just you know just stuck to the chassis it allows the chassis to you know to uh, help aid in the body movement helps aid in the chassis and maneuvering the car around there goes my backdrop there so that's a good thing uh i like body movement and body float it really helps on everything it doesn't matter what slot car you have body float is the most simplest thing to do to start out with and then you could always go from there now on these nsr cars uh nothing hard about them uh, doing these wires which is a little eyelid type and uh, it's very simple 
And of course, you want to remember where what wire goes where. So obviously, this one will be the right wire, which will be the negative. And this, I believe, is the positive, which will be on the left. I know Carrera sometimes has it backwards, <laughs> I notice. But uh, pretty much it. As you can see, that little red dot there, this would be on the right sign, meaning this is a negative. So they do it just the way that they have it this way, because I believe the way this motor rotates. Uh, which we would rotate counterclockwise in order to turn the gear, spur gear, clockwise to move the car forward. Uh, different configurations, different things. You, you find out as you go. I'm a beginner just like you are. I'm just going through the motions and doing stuff. Uh, but to start out with, it's not very hard to do these. You just basically pull these out. And, you know, note that, of course, negative is where that dot is which goes to the right, positive is to the left. And then what you're gonna do is just squeeze here and pop these out. And that guide has been removed. Now you ain't gonna do anything with the front tires. You may give them a little oil, a little movement, it seems okay right there. I will see if we get these to freewheel a little bit better. These really don't, they don't play a critical part in this chassis. That's just the way this car is, runs. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll change the motor pod, of course. The uh, not the motor pod, but put a suspension in it. And uh, you could do this basically by just removing this whole thing off. It will remove from the chassis along with the axle and everything because it's all connected. So then what you're going to do is you're going to remove this. Separate everything over there because those screws are a different size, I believe, than... Let's double check. And then the body screws. And actually they look the same. So you do mix them up. I don't think it'll be that bad, uh, big a deal. But we're going to take this one out. And we're going to remove this one. And there you go. Here's the chassis. Just by itself. And here's the motor pod. Very simple. Nothing uh, fancy or uh, too crazy. And then what you do is you're going to put your suspension on it. I just took it apart so you could see it. It's not very hard to do. And you're going to place it back in here, of course. Then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put our suspension in here. Now we got all this stuff out of the way. Let me put my parts here so they don't get kicked around because these little parts will fly everywhere if you're not careful. I know we're not going to use any of these things probably here. So we'll just kick them to the curb and... Uh, Put them there. Let's put our stuff over here. Uh, and we're going to get our suspension. Be careful with the springs. They do fly all over the place because they're very small and delicate. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll get our springs. As you can see, this is a soft suspension. And what you're going to do is um, there's a notch right here. I don't know if you can see it. And this, there's a notch here on the, uh, the uh, little standoff that you use for this and that goes right there it's like an alignment to keep this from spinning when you tighten it and what you're going to do is you're going to get your screw that you got for this just like so and you're going to get the spring and be careful when you put these springs in you don't lose them and you're going to put this in here and you're going to line this up with that little notch kind of hold it down like that and then I'm going to get my flat head and uh, I'm going to screw it in ever so gently. I want to make sure this is going in straight too. You don't want to go crooked so that looks straight. Let me put my old man glasses because I can't see up close. Okay, here we go. So let us do this here real quick and make sure this is going in straight. Like so. Just like that. And it went in fine, as you can see. Now we got some float there, as you can see. So we're going to go down. I'm going to go down all the way from just to make sure it goes in there, and then I'll back it out like two or three turns from now. And there you go. The spring is contained in here, and it's 
lined up with that notch there that's in the standoff part where the spring goes in between and this little tang here which is on your motor pod. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side. We're going to put the screw through. We're going to put our spring like so. And we're going to get our other little standoff here or mount. And we're going to thread it in. If you feel any resistance, don't keep going. Stop. If it's, you know, going in hard or it looks like it's going in crooked, back out and redo it. Out, and there you go. There's that right there. And what we'll do is we'll do the same for the front. And as you can see, the front has a notch too, just like so. And we'll get our, like so. Just like that. Here, now I'm going to do is move the camera in so you can see, because I'm sorry. Oh, tilting in, so let me. Hope I'm getting this here. Okay. As you can see, hopefully it'll focus. Sometimes this uh, DJI camera does weird things. You can see the little <clears throat> notch right here. And this is what's going to line up with this. And that's really important. You want to make sure that this is in the right spot and in there. Because if it's not, you're going to destroy this. And uh, you're going to be, you know, having to order another one. What we'll do is we'll put this in here. This one's a little tougher because it's the front. One thing I've done before is I've ruined one of these on the accident. So it's, it's not hard to do. You could do it pretty quick. And let me check again. Um, and this is a little nerve wracking here. Yeah, see, that's not going in right. And I don't like that. So, what I'm going to do. The side ones are pretty easy. This front one could be really difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is make sure I don't lose my spring. I'll put my spring there. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to kind of like make sure it's going in straight before I put it into the chassis. Because, um, And you could do these with the other ones. The side ones are easy to do. And the thing is, this thing moves around so much because it's teetering as you're trying to hold it because it's not up against anything like here on on this. Like you have a place to kind of hold on to it so it'll go in straight. So what you would do is just do this and make sure it's just going in straight. Kind of thread it in like so. It looks kind of somewhat straight. Like again, it could be a pain in the butt and... You know, it's really tough sometimes. You just kind of kind of have to work it out. And just like that. It looks pretty straight. And that should be good right there. At least that's what it looks like. But we'll have to try it out. This could be really tough to do. And we could do this too. We could go on the top. Just to make sure it is going straight since the top is kind of way to because you're, you're basically putting threads into this when you're cutting threads into the plastic things you can't hold this thing on too well there it goes right there Let's see if you can take it out you can see it's 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 a pain in the butt sometimes all right so what we'll do is we'll try this again see I'm having my difficulties just like somebody else would or if you don't good for you because I'm having a tough time with this I can hold this on straight like so oh and whoa there you go okay I didn't lose oh, there goes the spring okay I didn't lose the spring but I lost the other piece and went flying over into the abyss here so here it is Ugh. there you can see we all have our troubles when we do stuff nobody's perfect i sure as hell i'm not 
So let's try this again. So why don't we do this? We'll leave the spring out. And again, these are little little parts, you know, little plastic parts. There we go. They finally broke through there. And again, you're going to have to play with this a little to make sure. And I don't have the spring in there. I'm just making sure it's going in straight because I'm concerned that if it doesn't go in straight, it's going to screw it up. So there we go. We're, we're in good shape there. So it just took a little bit of finesse and a little time for this one. The side ones are easy, but this one in the front could be a pain in the uh, hind quarters. So, one second. I lose everything again. Get that out of the way. Get it there. Put it right here. And this should be threading nicely now. Playing nice, as they say. Hold it like that. And there we go. Finally, oh my goodness, that took it took a while. And you want to hold that, make sure that little mount doesn't move around and twist because it will because it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> this one's a tough one. Back it up a little. There we go. That one's tough. <laughs> but there you go. We got worked it through. You know, that's that's part of being in the hobby is figuring it out. He got a little tight, but we'll uh, we'll deal with that later. And uh, there's that part right there. Now we have a little suspension on there. And let me get some tires on here since I haven't put tires on it. So we won't need this packaging anymore. All the part numbers hid for this particular car. Part number is 1209. Uh, soft suspension and there's medium and so forth, depending on what you want to get. All this is available at Slot Car Corner. And the tires, of course, for this particular car are the NSR 5210 EVU Super Crip tires, 19 and a half by 12. Uh, low profile for new GT cars. Um, use NSR 5002 for new air gap system. So I think these are fine. If you want to use those tires. Uh, but I think it'll be good here. Let's get the packaging open and uh, get the tires on just like so and there we go there's one we'll get the other one just pull it over the rim these tires are really nice soft <laughs> not like urethane urethane are a little stiffer but the urethane tires are nice also just depends how you want to run your car and uh there we go and they're on now you see there's not much movement but as you tune this car you draw these out and you start figuring out what sweet spot you get in your track for your car and there you go there's some movement now you can see right there there you go and that's that right there then we're going to deal with the guide so with the guide this is from soccer invasion slot slot car invasion usa <laughs> uh, sometimes i get the name wrong i'm sorry oscar and just basically get your guide here and what we're going to do is put it like that uh, move the camera over, down, make sure you can see, oh, down George, there we go, and uh, they give you a little washer for this, and a little screw obviously, I think this is better than the thing clipping in, uh, no big deal. We're going to get our screw, just put it right up in there, and this will thread these thread in real easily. And we're going to thread them in. Like so we want it, we don't want it super tight, we want some movement because we don't want that's a little bit too much, obviously. So we'll tighten it down a little bit. 
may have to put a shim in there. I'm not sure, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, there you go. So we may have to shim it a little bit more, but anyways, we'll figure that out as we tune it. There's our, you know, guide, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put these in there. Uh, we'll use some, uh, some, uh, how would you call it? Uh, it's not car corner, but uh, guide wires. We'll change these out, and then what I'll do is I'll just measure the same if I can, like from here to here. We'll get some cutters and cut to size. Uh, if I can get my cutters. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared here. Uh, I have everything going on. I can't find my here. We go. Well, here are the cutters. They're buried. I'm gonna do is cut here, and then what I do is I, of course, you strip them. I strip this one a little longer, and I'll explain why. So there we go. I just like that, and then I twist it like that. Now what I'm gonna do is use my eyelets, and I have some eyelets here. So get them out of the package. Here we go. A bunch of eyelets here. I could dig them out. Be a little bit of pain in the butt. Little parts are pretty tough sometimes to deal with. So here is my eyelets. And what I will do now that I've cut this a little longer, what I want to do is put it through here. And uh, I'll probably make it a little longer because I want this to fold up and go over that uh, bottom of the eyelet, the barrel of the eyelet. Cut a little bit more off there twist it again and what I'll do is if you could see here I'm gonna put this right here and then I'm gonna fold this up that's what I do just like that and that's pretty much ready to go and I'll do the same with the negative or the black negative side I get the same distance if I can close to it about there put these off to the side I'm going to strip more of this like I did the other one twist it nice twist it so it doesn't come frat you know frayed up get my little eyelet I made this a little longer but that's okay and then I will fold it up like so there you go that one's ready if I get both of those ready now what I'll do is um, I will cut some braid some tin braid and I usually use scissors for this and up oh, much going on so here so and what I'll usually do is you want to cut the length of the blade so and you can make it a little longer. So you want the length of the blade is really what I kind of go off of. So I want it there. So what I'll do is I'll just make it a little longer. And I can always trim it. It's not, you know, a big deal. You can trim off the excess. Just don't trim too much off so you waste it. And I'll go like that. And I will grab the same one so I can get the same size, equal distance. And then I'll cut it right below where I cut the other one. Just like that. And there's my braids. Put this off the side because I clean up the mess later. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that's nice and flat. And, um, and I may have cut this too long, but you know what? That's okay. We're all just trying to show you everything. And I will put it right about like that. I'm going to fold it back a little now. I leave a little bit because this thing will kind of push in. And you can trim off if you need to. And now again, this is the left side. So what I'm going to do is I get this part right here, the um, the side that's folded over, and I put it against the braid. And there's a little hole there. And what you're going to do is get it in the hole, and you're going to push it in just like that. 
and that is how you put that on and now it's ready to go and it went a little bit too long but you know what I'm not worried about it big deal I can just cut the excess off and I'll fix that later so I made a little bit too much there but you know what like again like I said I'll chop it off right here I may have wasted a little bit no hell I got plenty of it uh, do the same to the other side and we'll come up again also and I probably need to put a shim on this thing because it's moving around a lot you don't want slop in that guide and I got plenty of shims and we'll do that afterwards so I'll pull it up like so and I'll get this again and I'll put it here it's a little tough to do A little tricky you just got to have patience I ah, see I'm pulling it too much so have a little trouble on this one so I mean don't uh, don't get freaked out over it just uh, regroup if you need to take a break and you're getting frustrated you know you need to take a break take a break it's just like when you're working on equipment or cars or anything Sometimes you need to take a break from stuff if it's getting frustrating. And we'll go at it again when you come back. You'll feel more energetic. And pull up. See now what happened there is I pushed the braid through. And that's what I don't like. So I will push it back up. I'll leave more this time. And I can always trim off. And then I'll get it again. And we'll do it just like that. There we go. That's pushed in. So that's it. You can see I have my excess there. <laughs> A little bit too much excess, but you know, hey, no big deal. Because it could be cut off. And we'll draw these up a little. And what you could do is, oh boy, there we go. Look, we got a little. I don't know. That's <laughs> that fooled me there. I thought they came off. <laughs> I saw those. Ah, oh, there you go. So, in my getting a uh, getting a little tricky here. So, what you could do is just get a scissors, and then just I'll chop that much off. There you go. And I trim a little bit more, so I'll go a little bit more. Just like that. A little bit short, but that's all right. And I'm just trying to trim the same way on the other one. You get a little bit more. And like that. Well, that's not bad. Right there is fine. I would have went probably a little bit longer, but I cut them a little bit shorter, but I won't kill them. And then uh, there you go. Those are. Pull down a little, and you can spread them out as you get them on the track and run them. And there you go. That is the uh, installing the eyelets and the uh, and the braid on your guide. And that's that for that part. <clears throat> and what we'll do is we're going to uh, solder uh, off those wires, and we'll pre-tin them also. So let me get my soldering iron fired up here. Excuse me, let me get put another camera here. <clears throat> right here. So, all my stuff falls around the place. And get my iron ready. Just like that. Okay, turn my iron on. I'm going to get my solder and my flux. What I'm going to do also is I'm going to strip these wires, strip them a little like so, strip the other one. My iron's ready to go, it just signaled me like so. The only thing I'm going to do is remove the old one, so here's the negative or the right side, just like that. We'll get that out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
pre-tindies so that they're easy to put on there when you solder them. Get a little paste lux, a little dab will do you. And get my solder. Let me get some of these tools out of the way. A little solder. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, get a little. What I'm going to do is just tin it, just like so. All right. Now that it's tin, I'm just going to come over here. Just like oh, missed it there. Just like that, and that's on. Freaking iron. Use the oil, and there goes my sign falling off again. Won't stay up. <laughs> it will later on. Now I got the left one on, or the left lead. Uh, one thing I didn't do, and you see, and I made a mistake. I should have went underneath there, so that's no big deal. I made a mistake. I'll correct it right in front of you. So it'll come off. Should have went underneath the axle, the front axle. I'll do that. And you have these little snaps here, of course, if you want to snap the wire, which I'll do. And I'll come over here. Let me uh, get some more flux this time. And put it all over this here so it'll solder in a little bit quicker. Just like that. Okay. It's on. Put my iron away there. There you have this on right now. And just like that. And what I'll do is I'll go and get this one removed. This one you got to be careful with because you're right next to the motor pod piece there. You just want to be real careful when you do this one. Uh, let's get some flux on this and tin this. So you want to tin the wires when we're, you know, make it easier to go on with the motor. There's that one. I'm going to just chop a little bit of it off. Make it a little shorter because it's got such a small area to go there. It's not dangling around too much. Chop a little bit off like that. And let me get, I'm going to put a little flux on it anyway, just to be sure that it will go on there right away. Again, if you want to pull the suspension pod, you can, if you're worried about melting it or something like that. And I'll do is get a little solder. see that it's trying to do it very strategic and careful actually what they have done here and I didn't see that that's my fault they have actually pulled that engine tang Kind of up here. Let me pull it back a little. Just to get more room on it. Sometimes this will be a little tough to do. Uh, let's try it again. Just like so. Alright. Do this here. All right, there we go. That's a little tough. There's not much room in there. And I think I got it just fine. Oh, and then again, no! another mistake again. I keep forgetting to put it underneath the front axle here. So, hello, you guys are probably telling me, hey, dummy, put it underneath the front axle. See, so, again, I got to do it over. <laughs> see, I make the mistakes, and you can see the mistakes I'm making. So, you don't do them. <laughs> and we'll do this again. Get it on there. There we go. Got that all done. There we go. Got it all soldered on. 
a little bit of a difficulty, but we got it done. And of course you could snap these in here like so. And uh, Room there. You could also snap them over here too. However you want to do it, they just you know just to hold the wires in place, just like so. Just like that. You pull that one out actually, and then it makes it a little better like that. There you go. Got a little resetting thing going on, which is good. And those are the wires. So on there and everything. Excuse me, I'm off camera here. Just straighten those out. And that's it. There you go. Car's ready to go. Looks like it's uh you know all good. And what we could do is, you know, check it out, make sure everything's on there properly. And uh that's that part right there. We replaced the leads, the guide. Uh, this is a little sloppy, I mean. I may put a shim on there. We'll have to see how it, how it handles. I think it's going to bounce around a lot, but you can see the tires don't, they barely touch. So I'll probably put a shim there just to shim it up, shore it up a little bit. So that's it. We'll head on to the track, see how it performs. <laughs> All right, we're back. And the two tools you'll want to have are the flathead screwdriver and your body one. So what you're going to do is play with it as you run the car and get it to the sweet spot that you want because everybody's track is different, like I said before. So here we go. And this is a, oh, a little bit too much juice there. We need to adjust a few things, but it looks like the guide's doing the job it's supposed to do. It's not popping off as easily. Let me see if I loosen the suspension pod, maybe a little bit more. And what I'll do is I go half a turn, half a turn, half a turn, and I'll run it again and see how it, you know, if it handles any better. Yeah, it holds on pretty good. And then what I'll do, I'll maybe I'll tighten up a little bit on the body screws and go on like a you know a turn in. And all you're doing, like again, is just really playing with the car and getting it to where it'll handle best. So I tighten the body screws in and just be slotted over there. <laughs> that turn two's a killer. And uh, just keep playing with it, man. That's that's the whole point of the hobby is to have fun and play with the car and tune them. Once you get them all tuned out, man, you, you really just start having a good time just rolling them around the track. And uh, what I'll do is I'll loosen the body screws again. Didn't seem to like that that much. Now that they've tightened up a little, it seems like they're being a little bit uncooperative here. So I'll go back out again. And again, it's just playing with it here and there and seeing where you know the sweet spot is. Turn two again, keep getting me. Ah, up. Ah, there we go again. See, it keeps keeps getting me. <laughs> then again, you just play with the car and get it tuned. I may play with the you know motor pod a little bit more by tightening it up. But this is the soft suspension. It just came off again. And then again, you got to make sure your track is clean. You don't want your track dirty. If your track is dirty, you're going to have really shitty handling capabilities, trust me. Make sure your track is clean and then the tires are clean. Because that will make a big difference too. So, you, you know, track maintenance is important. It doesn't teach you bad. I don't get the hang of it there. Oh, that turn two, man. I tell you, my turn two is a killer every time. Every car I've always tuned usually these slots there. 
So what I'll do is again, I'll just go over here and just play with the motor pod now. And this time I will turn him in a full turn. And you could turn these all the way in until they bottom out. Don't strip them though until they stop, you know. Can't go anymore, obviously don't force it. And then just loosen them up a little by little, either half turn, or one turn, however you think is best. That's tightening it up right there. Oh, too much. I would start by turning them down and going out one turn and then just little by little playing with it and see what, what you know works best for you, as I always say, or for your track. Obviously, I don't have a timing system, but I will be getting one soon. So it'll be a track mate, so this way we'll be able to compare times. I know I haven't been able to do that since I've been doing videos, but that's going to change. I have an older system on here, but it won't work very well with what I'm doing, so more like a bells and whistle type uh, kind of program I have. And then, you know, when you keep messing with it, so I'm going to turn them all the way in like so until they stop. Uh, there, and you just, again, this is just tuning it. You just got to play around with it. That's what's really nice about these NSR cars. They really give you a lot of tunability with them. I think they're they're worth the money. They're very, very well-built cars. I like tuning them. I think they're a lot of fun. So there, there's one turnout in the suspension pod after I drove them down. Yep. Go ahead. There you go. Ooh, too much. See, it really grabs there. I should clean the tires. Again, make sure your tires are clean. It's a good idea to clean your tires. Those are a little bit dirty. <laughs> Try picking up the stuff from the track. There you go. Seems to like it there. Look at it grabbing the corners pretty good. Now I'm at 10 volts, mind you. I'm not at like 12 or anything crazy like that. This is 10 volts. You also have you have a variable, obviously you have a variable power supply, voltage power supply. It's nice because really these cars at 10 volts, they run best. You could do it at 12, but they'll go so crazy. They'll just fly off the track and then there's no fun in it. I mean, not always having power all the time. All that power is good. And if you have a Carrera control unit, you could turn the speed down as well. Probably setting three is the one where it'd be, at, be optimal for these. But you'd have to play around home there. Yeah, you know, I got my suspension pod where I like it. So I could play on my body float if I want. So let me turn down all the screws for the body so they bottom out and they're tight. And then I'll go one turn, one turn, one turn. Now I'll see what it does there. Yep, well, came off there. Ah, too much. Yeah, see, it doesn't like it. I think I need more body flow. <laughs> Seems it'll come off on that turn one all the time. So what I'll do is seem to be running a little bit better before, and that's where you kind of like judge yourself to see how your car is doing. And you know, I'll turn them out one more turn. So that's two turns right there. I'll run it around again, see what it does. Seems like that body float is right where it wants it right there. So, so now you've optimally tuned your car how you want it to your track, and there you go. I mean, it, this is what it likes on my track, and this is what it gets. But every car may be a little bit different, but I know for your track, it's what you tune it to your track, to your track conditions. I say track conditions because if I take this to a wooden track, like Salat Zuka here in North Carolina, you know, here in North Carolina, who I know the people who have that wood track over there, it'll behave differently and you may have to readjust for that track. Yep, there you go, popped out there. But there you go, there you have it. Now that's a little two-unit monster there. Coming off turn one there on more. I'm giving it too much juice. 
And then you know how to maneuver the car, obviously, how much power to give it. If I don't talk as much, I can concentrate more. I can't talk and drive at the same time. <laughs> You see, it's grabbing good there. It just came off as soon as I talked. It's grabbing good. It pops off. So there you have it. Um, I hope that helps beginners. Like, again, I'm a beginner too, so I make mistakes as you see on camera. I don't script anything. If I screw up, I'm going to screw up. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, I do want to try the foams around the air gap part of it to see if it, if it does improve. Uh, handling any better again with these mosslers with the Evo 3 chassis the front tires hardly touch don't really give too much thought into that if you want to have adjustability in the front axle then you go with the Evo 5 chassis which I have one on the way and I'm going to experiment with that because I prefer an adjustable front axle because I like to be able to have the guide and the wheels where I want them because that to me is real critical but now that I have the way I put a small shim in this which I did it was a 5,000 shim and then a little oil in there. And then I put another one on top because as I tightened the screw, there was too much of this movement, so I kind of stopped it, so there's very little now. And that's important. You don't want a lot of slop in your guide, otherwise it will just keep popping out and it'll just be frustrating for you. But again, if you're a beginner, these cars are easy to tune and parts are just readily available, obviously, and they're not super expensive. An NSR car is, is a great buy. It's a fun car. And I mean, I'm having a blast right now. <laughs> this is cool. I love this car. <laughs> and I have two other monsters too. And I'm you know, going to have another one. And another one I'll be getting is a P68, which I've been dying to get. And then my Formula One car, which is a lot of fun too. And you can get different engine, you know, in, excuse me, engine. You can get different motor configurations if you prefer inline or sidewinder or if like this angle winder. I'll show you the other two cars I have here, the other Mosslers. Here are the other Mosslers that I have. And these are, you know, ready to go. And I'll show you how this black one handles. And this is an inline motor. See, it sounds different. This has a soft suspension kit on it. Has a deep guide. And, uh, you know, stock tires, no magnet, obviously. This has the... Uh, the original leads on them wire leads so the only thing that changes is the guide so see it you know behaves differently with a with a uh, inline motor sounds different too and then we have our silver one and this one is an angle winder as well I got this one tuned pretty good now This one I got down pretty good, and I probably should copy the same thing. <laughs> but again, this is the, these are all Evo three chassis with non-adjustable front axles. Again, I have nothing against these ones. These ones they do fine. I would prefer an adjustable front axle like the Evo five chassis. But when we get the other one coming, we'll find out how that does. This one really handles really nicely, and again, I got this set really well. And uh, and I need to do the same thing with this one. Keep playing with it, but. This one runs pretty good too. So that's it from Area 51 Raceway. I hope you enjoyed the segment that I've done here. I know it's kind of long on and long and drawing out. So <laughs> I hope you guys take care and, uh, you know, and as always, have fun racing.